Are you sure we have everything? Yeah, yeah, I think I think we're good to go. I think we have got everything packed, everything put in the bags. I can't think of anything. I made a list. I checked it all off as I was putting it in the bag. So I think we're ready to go. Um, before we head out, though, why don't you and I uh, pray together before we go? Lord, I pray that you would help us on this journey. I pray, God, that you would guide our path and direct our lives. Lord, if there be any roadblocks or tolls or accidents, I pray that you would guide us, protect us, help us find the right way around and the quickest path and the right path and the safest path toward our destination. Lord, we're looking forward to this trip and we love you. And we ask you to keep your protecting angels around us in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm All so right. excited. Are you sure we've got everything? I'm positive. All right. All right. Let's head out. Let's go. Oh my gosh, I forgot my phone charger. Got the hand sanitizer. Oh, we're never going to get going.
to show you a simple object lesson that I think will make it simple the idea that we need direction in our lives. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. His word also tells us that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. So it, when we have Jesus in our lives, and, and what that really means is that we have his word in us. We memorize the Word of God. We read the Word of God. We meditate upon the Word of God. If you have the opportunity uh, to join Bible quizzing, or you can, you can learn the Bible on your own with your parents, um, that Word living inside of you will help you. When Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted of the devil, he didn't use fancy words. He didn't come up with his own ideas. He didn't have his own weapons. He simply used the word of God. It is written. And the devil had to flee. So this balloon represents me, represents you. And normally what happens without God we, um, this is our life, and there's me, kind of a little stretched out there. See, there's the me. See me? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow this up again. So normally what we like to do in our life is, without God, we just sort of do it on our own. And so, when we head off into life, that happens. There was no direction to the balloon. It just sped off, and it went in all kinds of directions. It actually started off and went over here, and then it landed over there. And you can't see where it is right now, but it's over there, and it started off over there. And so, um, but if we add one simple thing to the Word of God, or if we add one simple thing to our lives, it'll make all the difference in the world. So I'm going to take this balloon, and I'm going to do something uh, just really simple to it. So here I've got Jesus added to my life. The tape is kind of like the obedience. And now I let go of the balloon and it went in a direction. It went the way Jesus wanted me to go. When we have Jesus in our lives, it gives us direction. Again, every place we look in the Bible, he orders our steps. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. When we walk, Every place in the Bible that you see someone walking, when they're obedient to God, they always get to the place that God wants them to go. There's a, there's a scripture that says, the way of the transgressor is hard. The word transgressor is, simply means a breaker of law, the law. And so when we break God's law, our balloon just goes any which way. But when we are obedient to God, we could even say that that wind in that balloon is the Holy Ghost. Uh, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And so that wind propels us. Jesus is attached to us by the straw. And so when we let go of the balloon, we have direction. And so today, young people, I want to really emphasize to you, um, as you grow older, 
there are going to be many things that tempt you. Um, I'm much older than most of you, and I can tell you, even at my age, there are things that are tricky, appealing, deceiving, and I've got to be careful that I don't go the wrong way, that I don't get the, a bad attitude, that I don't get my feelings hurt, that I don't um, get bitter, that I don't get indifferent to the things of God. But if I have Jesus guiding me, and every day I make it a point before the day is over, Sister Melissa and I, we have prayer here in our home, and we ask God to help us and to forgive us of anything that we did that day and to help us realize if there be any evil thing in me, any iniquity in me, Jesus, get it out of me. Let me be pure. Daniel, the Bible tells us, had a spirit of excellency. I want to be excellent for God. And to do that, I have to attach him to my life so that when life comes along and I don't know which way to go, it's the Lord that will direct my path. And so today, uh, I'm going to pray really quickly with you, and let's ask God to help us be directed of His Spirit. Would you, would you join me? Jesus, I pray that you would help us learn to be obedient, uh, to learn to repent. Repentance is the first fruits of our salvation. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then the rest of that scripture talks about he will forgive them, heal their land. God, I pray that your word says in Acts 2.38 that we are to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is what fills my balloon up and helps me go the direction I'm supposed to go. God, I pray that you would touch every person that hears this today, sees this today. And Lord, I pray you'd guide their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, I'm sitting out here in the car, waiting on Paul. He is in line at the truck stop, waiting for the trucker shower. Don't ask. He decided that he had been in the car long enough, he needed refreshed, so he's in line for the trucker shower. So I told him, I'm gonna sit out here in the car and I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna stand in there in the truck stop and look like I belong. So today, um, while I'm waiting, patiently, um, I wanted to uh, talk to you about um, our lesson. Um, so we, as you know, uh, Paul and I are on vacation. Uh, we're on a little journey. And um, we're often on a journey, and that journey is called life. Every morning you wake up and you start on a path. And you end your day at night when you go to bed. And what you do during the hours that you're awake and how you live your life is the journey that you're taking. So um, I had felt this lesson for uh, quite a while and it took us a little bit of time to get everything together. But I wanted to talk to you about the decisions that you make and how we live our life and how it affects this journey and where we're going. So I did um, some research. Uh, Brother Paul called me grandma a while ago and told me it was on the internet. So I got on the internet and I got some Bible verses and I want to read those to you. So the first one is found in Proverbs uh, in its chapter 3 and it's verses 5 and 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths so when you trust in the lord with all of your heart not just a little smidge of it but with all of your heart 
and you lean on him and his ways and not into your own understanding and the object lesson that Paul did uh, today kind of illustrated how when we do things our own way, we just go everywhere. I mean, we're just like blowing all up in the air with no direction. But when we attach ourselves to God and we put him as the center and the focus of our life, he gives us the direction that we need to go in the right ways. Um, the next verse is uh, Psalms. 37 and 23 and it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way so the steps of a good man what does that mean a good man the Bible doesn't say it's a perfect man he God doesn't intend for us to be perfect he knows that we're this stuff right here this is called our flesh and as long as we live in that we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. We're going to make wrong decisions and wrong choices because we're not God. We don't have perfect thinking. And sometimes we think our ideas are better than God's ideas. But when we follow after him and we let him direct our paths, then it says he delighteth in his way. So it gives us great delight. I think I messed up. I think I need to start over with Psalms 37. And he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted, delighteth in his way. I'm just going to talk about the steps of, a good, of the good man. Okay, the, sec, the next... The next verse that I found was Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. So the steps of a good man um, are ordered of the Lord. What does that, what does that look like? Um, it doesn't say the steps of a perfect man are ordered by the Lord. The, uh, God doesn't intend for us to try to be perfect. We should strive towards excellency but he knows that we're flesh we live in this old flesh and the skin and we make decisions that are wrong because we we don't have the mind of god we don't our ways are not his ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts we aren't perfect like god so we are going to mess up but when we try our best to live right and make right decisions and do the right things. He orders your step so that when you walk, you are walking in his will. The next verse is Psalms 23 and it's verses 2 and 3. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. So here he's leading us beside the still waters. So he restoring, he's restoring my soul. And when I'm walking with him, I'm being restored. I'm, my spiritual energy is being renewed. And I, it gives me the strength to keep walking and to keep walking. It says he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. When we're truly walking after God and he's leading us, he's not going to lead us down a path that's all stones and things that would cut your feet and rip at your, at your legs. He's leading us down the paths of righteousness, but we have to follow him for that to happen. Uh, Psalms 25 and 10 says, All the paths of the Lord are steadfast, love and faithfulness for those who keep his commandment and his testimonies. Oh my lands, what a path to walk on. A path of love and faithfulness. To me, that's like sunshine and rainbows and butterflies and birds flying when I think about that. But it's for those that keep his covenant and his testimonies. So, you, it's not just about saying, I'm following Jesus. It's about keeping his commandments. It's about doing the things that are right. So today, the, the 
verse that I want to focus on. I have three verses, um, and it's Jeremiah 29 and 11 through 13. This is a very common uh, section of scripture that I'm sure most of you have heard at some point in your life. Um, and I'm going to read it out of the NIV. Um, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So God has a plan for us. So, you know, when we got ready to go on our little trip and we saw all those sites that you seen us visit, we had to have a plan in place. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to get, okay, we're going to stop here. Then we're going to go a little farther in our journey and we're going to stop here. And then um, some people call it an itinerary. Uh, if anybody's ever been on a cruise, uh, you get an itinerary so that you know when you're supposed to go to the uh, dining facilities and eat and when they're going snorkeling and when you're going to be able to get off the cruise ship and go onto the islands. And there's a plan and God has a plan for you. And sometimes things come up and, you know, you'll as you saw in our uh, little thing with our roadmap, sometimes you'll be going down the road and all of a the sudden there's a road right here and it just comes out of nowhere. And you have to have the spiritual wisdom to know if you're supposed to turn on that road or if you're supposed to go on up the next to the next exit and get off. And you have to make the decision through prayer and following God of which road it is that you're supposed to take. So I have some examples here that I want to show you of some ways to know how to go places. This is called a Tom Tom. Um, this is a little device that you uh, put on your windshield and you charge it and you turn it on and you put your address in there where you're going. And it's a GPS and it um, shows you, it, it talks to you and it shows you uh, the best path to go. It avoids construction. It avo uh, You can set it up to where it av avoids toll roads so you don't have to pay. Um, it avoids um, areas where there might be a policeman or it gives you a warning to, hey, you know, like get your foot off the gas. There's a policeman up ahead. So this little device, um, it helps us when we're going on a journey. So that's um, a Tom Tom, and then I have my handy dandy road map. Um, these were used <laughs> before we had GPS. I remember being um, young and even um, a young adult, and this was the way we did it. Before we went on a trip, we would get out the road map. Sometimes this is um, the whole United States, so it's really busy. But we would buy road maps if we were going to South Carolina on a vacation. We would buy a map of just South Carolina. And we would mark the places that we wanted to go visit while we were in South Carolina. We would figure out our road. We'd know the best way to get there. So that's, uh, that's a road map. So then I uh, loaded maps onto my phone. This is basically the same thing as this. So I can punch in an address on my phone um, and it tells me, um, gives me the direction. There again, it can avoid construction. It can avoid all the things that would hinder you in your trip. Um, so those are things when we take a natural trip. Um, those are things that we need in our um, in our cars in our whatever whatever it is whether you're going on a sometimes even on a train you you would want to take your stuff so that when you get to your destination even on a plane that way when you get to your destination you know all the site places to go and everything to see and so in our spiritual journey um, we have a GPS and it's called the Bible 
this is this is my wonderful Bible. And um, whenever I don't know what to do, I can get this Bible and I can open up the pages and I can start reading. I can get in my concordance back here in the back. And if I'm dealing with fear, I can look up uh, scriptures on fear. Um, if I'm dealing with um, my enemies, people that would come against me, people that would cause me harm, I can look up scriptures that can help me uh, have victory over that. So this is my uh, this is my GPS. This is my roadmap. And one of the things that I talked about on the TomTom, -tom, as well as the map on my phone, is there's a voice when I need to turn. There's an annoying voice that comes over this, and they say, uh, turn left one mile up the road. So by the between now and by the time I get to the road, it's going to tell me that probably four times by the time I finally get to the road. So sometimes we have voices that speak into us. Uh, it can be your pastor. It could be your parent. It could be your Sunday school teacher. It could be your school teacher. And sometimes in your mind, they can be annoying because they're not saying the things that you want them to say. They're telling you, stop doing that. Get a hold of yourself. Rein yourself in. That wasn't the wisest decision that you could make. Why did you do that? Have you ever seen that face? I have made that face several times at my kids. What are you thinking? So sometimes the voice that you hear it's not going to say exactly what you want it to say, but it's what you need to hear. Because that voice, just like with this roadmap, that voice is trying to keep you from coming to the end of a road and the bridge is out. And if you don't stop, you're going to go off of the road where the bridge should be. And the voice of your authorities the voice of the people that God has put in your life to give you guidance and direction. They're doing it because they love you. Even if it looks like this, it's still done with love. We don't want you to make a decision that would cause you to miss your turn, to miss your road. I want my voice speaking into you to speak the truth, to speak things that are going to save you, so that one of these days when the trumpet sounds and we all leave this ground and we go up and we meet Jesus Christ in the air, I want you to go with me. I want you to be saved. I want to be saved. The goal that I am walking towards and the reason I am on this path every single day is I've got to make it to heaven. I've, so the things that you are you need to put in your bag for your trip is baptism, repentance, the Holy Ghost. Make sure that you're not leaving any of that behind when you're leaving for your journey. Because those are the things that are going to get you to your final destination. And that is heaven, our home. So today, I want you, more than anything... When you start on your journey every single day, I want you to have everything in your bag that you need. I want you to have your roadmap and be have knowledge of this. Be familiar with it. Don't just pick it up when you're getting ready to decide, oh no, I need to make this decision. Hide the Word of God in your heart. Brother Paul talked about getting involved in Bible quizzing. Even if you just memorize verses at home, get the Word of God in your heart so that when you start on your journey, you're going to have the guidance that you need. Keep those voices in your life. As you grow and you get older and you become a teenager and you become a young adult and you marry, you have your own families, keep those voices in your, in your life and in your mind. And because the things that they are telling you now when you're a, a little child 
even a preteen, the things that they are telling you are what is going to help you make right decisions, help you to go the right path as you uh, get married and as you become an adult and you have to make bigger and bigger and bigger decisions, the Word of God will be the roadmap and will be the guidance that you will need. I love you all very much and I am so thankful that I got to spend this vacation with you and that you got to experience with Brother Paul and I all the wonderful sights that we saw today. Um, it was a busy day for us. We have uh, traveled, we're wore out, but we're on our way back home and we look forward to uh, being back in the house of God with you. And um, I'm just going to sit here and wait on Brother Paul. Oh, I think I hear him coming. I think he has his shower taken and he is coming. <laughs> Oh, that was so much fun. I had such a good time, but I'm so glad to be home. Yeah, me too. Um, it was great seeing all the sights that we saw, and um, and we're safe. Yes. And uh, we got to where we wanted to go, and we didn't have any accidents, and um, all went well. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we uh, say a prayer real quick um, and end this and um, just thank God for his direction. Lord, thank you for keeping you, us God. safe on our journey. Lord, thank you, thank you for thank guiding you for us journey, each and every step of the way. Thank, thank you, Lord, that when we called on your name, you were there. You were an ever-present help God. in time of trouble. Lord, we appreciate all your goodness. Grateful that we are called your children. We thank you for your mercy and goodness. And we ask all these things in the wonderful name. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, really quick before we uh, end our video today, I have two announcements that I want to make. Uh, the first is on Sunday, a pastor will be drawing um, for the bicycle. For uh, It's between uh, Wesley and Liam. And one of those young men are going to be the proud owner of a new bicycle. So we will do that on Sunday. And then we wanted to um, announce that we have adopted uh, two new members of our Lifeway team. And we want to have a contest to help you, to help for you guys to help us name them. Okay. So we wanted to introduce you to our two new Lifeway uh, members of our Sunday School team. Um, so we're going to have a contest and we want 
all of you to help us name them. Right now, they're very sad because their names are Jane and John Doe. They have no names, so we need to give them a name. So, I want you to come up with a name and have your mom or your dad text uh, Sister Melissa or Brother Paul um, and name our little girl and name our little guy. And we're going to have a contest and it will be, uh, we'll have a committee of people that will help us choose the correct name. And we will give a prize to the winner of the contest. Yay! The puppets are so excited. So, um, you're going to see more of them. They're going to be with us more and more. We'll be having them when we all come back together at church. We'll be having them there with us. They are ours. We own them now. They've come to live with us. So, we are super excited. And just remember, have your mom and dad text Brother Paul and I. Uh, we need a girl's name and a boy's name to um, name our little friends. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful week. We look forward to being back together, and we will see you all soon. All right, take care. Bye. 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 See you later.